Hey everyone, with West Coast Muscle Saws. Got a couple of questions on some chainsaw repairs uh, and TIG welding. I'm going to try to answer those questions for you. Also a question on a bearing repair on a uh, winch that's got aluminum housing and we'll go over that. These videos are for entertainment only. You never try to do any of these things that I show you here. Uh, just be safe, take it to professional. I'm just kind of highlighting what I did in the past, but these are definitely for entertainment only. <clears throat> Excuse me. The first question I got was on bar repair. Let me grab a bar here. Hang on, guys. And there's several videos, and uh, the video that this gentleman was talking about is one where I repaired the processor bars. They were just totally annihilated. And I was able to, what I did was, uh, this is just a saw bar, but it's a bar, so we'll go over what I did to it. Um, the tip, of course, is a roller nose. What I did was a sprocket nose. It was all bent over and really just tore out of shape. And that happens when they're running the bars through the processor. It's real easy to do. These bars are supposed to cut the log, come back up, log slides down, and it makes a bucking cut. Well, what happens is that doesn't work right all the time. That bar gets down in that position, and you can see as the log slides by, it just either bends the bar or tears it all up. And what I did on that one was the nose was so bad that I heated it and got it back into position, and then I welded it with a TIG welder, and or excuse me, a wire welder. I would use a wire welder and fill it in there and ground it. And then I used my bar shop, which they're out there if you can find one, and I welded up solid and I was able to cut the groove out with the wheels that you use on there. There's 50 gauge, uh, 63 gauge wheels and the 122 for the processor bars and so you're able to work that metal. But on these bars, all the bars, we're talking bars in general, they're hardened out on the corner here, they're hardened and as you get back in towards it here it's softer. And you can weld these out here and you use a studite, a studio uh, rod, but you do that in gas welding. You use your oxyacetylene and you can actually lay that hard facing just like you can see it was done here. You used to do that all the time. You can lay that hard facing in there and then you grind it down with your surface grinder and then you use your bar shop to cut the groove and get it back to original. It's, real, it's fun to do to be able to repair these bars. There's not many guys out there, I'll tell you right now, that do it. If a person ever wanted to get into it to, uh, you know, if make some money and learn how to do it, uh, these guys just, the saw guys love their bars and they want them repaired. The processor bars are so expensive. You can repair those processor bars for around 70 bucks, 60, 70 bucks. Some of those bars sell for 200 bucks, 300, 400 bucks for the bigger ones. And so if a guy was really getting into repairing this specialty stuff, you can do that. I did it for years. Um, and um, did real good on it and uh, saved the guys money. Plus, I made a good uh, income living for my family doing that. So that's, uh, you know, and I can answer more questions if you got questions on the uh, saw bar repair and stuff like that and how you can try to locate the equipment. The equipment's just not made anymore. You either got to go out and try to find some bar shops or you can build some of the tooling you can build for it. But once you get set up and going, uh, believe me, you will have plenty of work. Another thing, and this, this is another thing I got into, let me show you here. This, uh, this is Dwayne's Lombard, and you can see right here it's got a crack. And this is kind of the rear model, it's got the uh, vibration, vibration dampener um, motor mounts right here to eliminate the vibration, it's really rear model. And of course, trying to find this piece, it's going to be pretty tough. You're just not going to, you're not going to find it. You see there. What that is is magnesium, <clears throat> easily repaired. I don't do it anymore. I, uh, I, t I welded with mag welded magnesium uh, probably since the 70s. What I would do with this, of course, take it all apart, clean it really well. It's magnesium, so it has to be really clean. And I would cut a groove in it and then mount it with my uh, some uh, with my vice grip channel locks, whatever, and get it to where it was perfect, to the position I want, and then tack weld it, tack weld it. The deal on this magnesium is it's got to be super clean. You can't 
well that stuff if it has got any kind of dirt grease or anything what you do is after you've cleaned it you don't want to use a glass beater you want to use like walnuts or, or wire or something like that you can uh, wire wheel them clean you a very good area and then I used to take the uh, torch and just gently we're not trying to melt it we're just trying to burn off the impurities you go back and forth on that and you'll see it actually bring out the oils and whatnot do that two or three times clean it real well wire wired again the wire welder or excuse me the wire wheel you can get that thing really clean and it'll just weld up beautifully you can actually take your uh, be, be careful it's flammable you know be careful don't do this at home this is for entertainment only remember that anyway you clean that all up paint that back and I've made those things look brand new another thing another special thing if you guys want to get into repair saws and do different things if you can get into a UA specialty field as in TIG welding or bar repair doing the uh, specialty bar repair not only will the guys bring you all the bars they can have you fix or the aluminum magnesium to be fixed on the saws but you'll get a following of people wanting to get their saws repaired as they see that you can do a good job on stuff like this i got another issue here and that's something i've repaired a lot and i learned this uh, I'm, i mean also and i've mentioned it before i'm a master uh, briggs of stratton master technician and um, did that for years i uh, studied under uh, let me see if i can get a name here i actually actually went to the factory and Bruce Radcliffe don't even know if he's around anymore actually studied under him and he was the holy grail instructor for Briggs and Stratton and I'm telling you there was nothing that Bruce didn't know about repairing and all kinds of trick things to learn and that's another thing if you're learning this business you want to find the guys that have got all the great information you just got to do it anyway what he taught us how to do and, and why it's going to pertain to the winch repair was we had the cylinder on the Briggs and Stratton's, you know, the old L heads. And you had your intake and exhaust valve and you had the, the seats. These are the seats right here. And this was an aluminum block, of course. And of course the valves set in the valve guides and they went and they when they went up and down they seated against the valve seats those little l heads would heat and cold and pretty soon these seats would work out and of course pretty tough trying to fix it to do it properly we showed us the correct technique to fix those and i've used that application for other things in the work that i did and the seat being loose just floating around in here what you would do is clean that area really good and then you take a new seat and you can buy it from Briggs and you would set it in there and here's the trick you've got two punches you would use one with a point to it and then a flat nosed one and what you would do is you would spike that new one you just put in there at three different places four maybe right over here center it with this punch or your punch and then you would take the drift flat and then you would start put one up here one down here one over here one over here one over here what you're doing is you're if you use the punch you're just kind of squishing one little area of aluminum with that flat piece you're actually reshaping that aluminum and pushing it into that seat and the reason I wanted to show you that is this is what I did on a winch very popular uh, chainsaw winch they're made out of aluminum and they've got a bearing right in here that goes into that aluminum and it's just like on the chainsaws what you would do is heat the aluminum of course a little bit throw the bearing in the freezer tolerances aren't quite as tight on the winches and it would set into place and everything would work properly well this would work loose and so what I would do on these is the same thing I would do the centering of the bearing put it in there with the punch with a little punch a sharp point on it and then after I did that I would use the flat end and go around that the same way 
and that bearing's there. It's not going anywhere. And so anyway, we did that, and it worked out really well. So I don't think I got anything else. Oh, I do have a couple pictures I'm going to try to show you here, I think. It'll be a short video today, guys. Let's see here. Hang on here. I got some of these that uh, if you guys are interested in, I'll. Uh, these are some very vintage advertising things. And if you'd like to get your hands on one, I'll uh, sign them West Coast Muscle Saws and sign them for you. But isn't that cool? this one right here and if you'd like to get your hands on that here's a great one right here that McCullough 650 and that beautiful a couple more here and then we get out of here oh I like this one right here if you're a Ford guy and McCullough guy isn't that great Oh, I want, yeah, there's one other one here I want to show you. <clears throat> You've all seen that picture of, of my customer, the Jerry Smith, uh, doing the uh, competition cutting in Sutherland. Well, she did it there several years, and I've got some more pictures of her here. There she is, running another. This looks like a gear drive. That's yeah, a gear drive McCullough, probably a 797 or whatever. Great big saw, and, and those are heavy. You don't realize how heavy those are. She's handling very nice. And big old chips falling down here. I've got one more over here. And if you want to get your hands on these, we'll autograph them and, and get them to you. We'll electronically send it to you. It's kind of a fun way to do it. Let's see if I can get this other one to come up here. Hang on. These are all back in the 50s. Anyway, we'll wind her down, guys, and thanks for uh, joining in and watching it, and we'll catch you guys later.